Okay, hello there viewers. So welcome to my first OBS recording. I guess this is my first time, so there's going to be a lot of blunders. And I just choose chess as something that I used to. So please don't unsubscribe so soon. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you have watched a lot of Queen Game Beats. So this is one of the games of the game that I played against this guy, Mistriff. He's a 1009 player, quite strong. Okay, we met. I met him during the chess arena recently. Someone organized a tournament, and let's have a look at the game. Okay, I believe this is quite instructive. Okay, the game start with C4, and I reply. He took it, and we played in this variation. Uh, this is not the variation that I want to play, but I, I kind of got panic since this is my first arena game. I haven't played arena for quite a while, and he kind of tricked me. He took that knight and come here. And if you can see the pawn structure, so it, it's a lock game, it's a close game, half half close, sort of. And in the half close game, the knight is a superior pieces because the knight it can jump everywhere. And you can see my bishop here, it can't move because of the pawn structure. And this bishop also, they can't move. And so this is a game where we call who has a better minor piece. Because I have two bishops which got locked. He got one bishop which got locked. But he has two knights to jump around and only has one knight to jump around. So he has a better minor piece than me. Okay, so I was a bit panicking. Okay, what, what should I do? So I tried to activate my knight over here. So we move around a bit. And in the game where the better, this is a better or minor piece who has better minor piece. So I try to get this knight into somewhere. Oh, sorry, I try to get this knight into somewhere good. So move around. So yeah, so I aim for his knight. So he go, he goes there, and I move. Okay, you need to understand. This bishop is bad. He cannot move around. It doesn't have too much place to go compared to another knight, which has a lot of attacking chances. Okay, the knight can move around a lot. So at this moment, I come here. Okay, this is considered a very good thing to me because now I can exchange this bishop for his good knight. Okay, and this knight cannot run away because if this knight gonna run away, I'm gonna take this castle. Castle is superior than knight in most cases, so he can't do much. So I exchange the bad bishop for his good knight. Okay, so right now he has one knight, I has one knight. He has one bad bishop, I has one bad bishop. So in terms of minor, superior minor piece, eh, uh, I'm quite relieved. Okay, so we move around a bit more. Okay, so we need to understand what I mentioned just now. This bishop is bad because he cannot move. Locked by the pawn. So what I did is, I tried to exchange this bad bishop for this good knight. Okay, normally, normally this bishop, we do not want to trade because it protects this pawn. Because if not, there's a, there's a hole there. But since this bishop is kind of useless, you can move it that way. So I better change this bad bishop for this good knight. In chess, that's the thing. You need to consider what's good, what's bad. You cannot have a perfection game. Okay? So you, he kind of realized that. So he's attacking my, my knight. And I was like, I have this intermittent move. So, so if I took this, he'll take that. So not much difference. But yeah, I got this in, in between move where now I my knight is attacking his queen. So he has to run away. And now I can exchange this bad bishop for the knight. Okay? And not only that, this is considered a bad pawn because he's alone. And at this moment here, there's a standoff. My queen is just looking at his queen and currently it's my turn. So what should I do? Okay, uh, on the first glance, I want to move my queen here. So I want to avoid the exchange of queen. Normally, if you are if you are attacking, you want to keep the queen. But this is nobody's attacking yet. I just want to move my queen and avoid the exchange. But if I were to do that, and he, in my knight doesn't have a lot of place to go, place to go. So I come here. My knight is kind of trapped in the enemy's line. Okay, so there's no way it can go. This one, he got attacked by the queen, so he can't go there. So the only safe place is over here. And 
doesn't look so much safe. <laughs> what about if his queen move there at the back to attack this knight? So the knight could get trapped. Okay, it's a newbie game. Um, yes, knight can jump around. But since knight can jump around, sometimes people just accidentally move their knight and then got trapped. So you should be very careful of where your knight can go. So looking at this moment, so I decided that, hey, hey let's just exchange the queen and save the knight. Okay, move here. Things are good. But now, I can freely take the pawn. Okay, the pawn is now unguarded. Undefended. So I take another pawn. And I took two of his pawns and he took one of the pawn. Okay, once we reach in this position, move here. I can see that I have quite a good chance of winning. Because this pawn now, it has no pawn to block it. And this pawn, it can kind of go, but this pawn is move, watching it is in the direction. So if I can move this pawn to the left side, or I can just move this pawn to the right side, then I have a better chance of pushing two pawns. Okay, has two pawns to get the queen. So looking at this favorable kind of endgame for me, I said to him, hey, why not just exchange this castle? And it's a simplified game for me. But he took it. He can't do much. So he come here. Okay, so this castle is pinning my knight. Because my, my castle cannot move. But hey, there's, I can see that this bishop has a hard time to get into the game. So I can just move my king to protect my knight. Or I can just move here. Or then my knight move around to protect my castle. So I was like, okay, never mind. i just move my king. The same game. You should bring the king. Okay, now the bishops comes in. So I just move the pawn. And the bishops comes here, eyeing on these two square. I was like, whatever, you're not you're not disturbing me anytime soon. So now this castle looking here. So I just like, hey, never mind, I just defend back. But yeah, you can say that uh, I can I can move my pawn yet. I was like, doesn't matter. I just move here first, activate my king. He activate his king as well. So I think around. I'm wondering what to do. Oh yeah, if I, my knight come here, my knight come here. My knight will be attacking three pieces. Oh, not that. Ah, so I've been looking things wrongly. <laughs> so my knight can only take two pieces. <laughs> okay, obviously he's going to cover that. He's not going to allow me. I was like, okay, never mind. I just bring my, my bishops. I maybe just bring my king attacking his bishops. He brings here. Okay. You need to understand. At this moment here, I decided to save my knight. Why? Because this knight is considered superior to this bishop because this because of this diagonal this block. It, for me, it's very inactive and this knight can jump around to a lot of a square. So I consider this knight as a superior. Okay, we can move around. We got good place to go. Oh shit, move. So I'm just trying to say that this knight can move around. Okay, so yeah, I said, okay, I'm not gonna exchange the knight. Knight gonna stay on the board. It's better than your bishop. So he moves his queen. And at this moment, I come here, forking his knight and his castle. Okay, but now I'm allowing this exchange. Okay, uh, think back for one moment. When it was here, when this, when the exchange could happen, I decided no, I want to save the knight. But here, I decided to say, hey, come on, bring it on. Exchange, I don't mind. Why do I want to that for the exchange? Okay, you may pause the video. Okay, if you're ready. Because if the exchange happened, now I bring my pawn here, and now I can have two pawns, two pass a pawn. As I mentioned just now, at the very early part. At here, I already mentioned that I can move this pawn. If I can either bring this this uh, pawn away from the game, or either I can bring this pawn to the right side. Now I can have two passive pawns. So yes, what I envisioned just now has become true. Okay? And uh, he's trying to block it, and I was like, eh, never mind. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is quite and this is quite funny because my king come in the middle, and yes, uh, his rook cannot attack me. You need to understand a few things about rook. Rook is powerful. 
but it's considered slow and heavy. For me, rook is like catapult. If you go to the wall, there's a catapult that which throw the rocks. It's strong, but it's, it's heavy and slow. So you cannot attack here. You need to move around, and then only you can attack the king. That was like, it's not, you can't move in a cramped space. So yeah, I was like, just move my king there, I don't care. So I move my rook here, and now I took another pawn. Boom. Attacking his king and the pawn. Uh, he has to move around. <laughs> I was like, okay, now I'm having a better game. Alright, I just offering another trade. Why? Uh, you can see at this moment. So if this happened, I'm losing this pawn. Okay? I'm losing that pawn. Why do I say, that? okay, I don't mind losing that pawn? Because now this pawn can easily go to and get it as a get into queen. I could, I, this pawn can easily queening. Okay? Now, look for one moment. This is considered a basic endgame where there's a pawn on one side and black has two pawn. White only has one side of pawn. Uh, this pawn can easily move to get a queen. And the only thing that can stop him is this king. Okay? Or maybe this king come here, can stop him there. But if his king is busy with my pawn, my king can move around and come here and attack all of his pawn. And once the pawn are cleared, all this pawn can go to, the, to get a queen. Not a problem for me. Okay, memorize this endgame. This is a very common endgame pattern. So I was like, okay, go on, take the pawn. <laughs> Come on, you can, you can take it, I don't mind. So yeah, he said, no, 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 no. I said, yeah, come on, one more time, go ahead, <laughs> I don't mind. So yeah, he's going there. I come here, I take the pawn, I don't care. <laughs> okay, I try to move this king, this pawn away so this pawn can move up. Alright, so that's the common king game. So yeah, after this, there's more, nothing more, nothing much to say. Okay, I just get the queening and yeah, and he resigned. Okay, so the lesson that you can take is get a better minor piece, as I mentioned just now. If you has a better minor piece, then you can win the game. If you got a bad minor piece like me just now, that this bishop, try to exchange with this good minor piece like this one here. Okay, and then what happened here? I exchanged my bad bishop for his knight. Okay, and yeah, be careful not to get your knight trapped. And once you got here, you can see that you got a winning end game. So just, you can trade already. Okay? You got a winning game. Although bishop is normally is considered stronger than knight, but it's not functioning in this game. It's, everything is supporting each other. So yeah, after that, it's nothing more. And do take note which minor piece is stronger. And if you would like to exchange, make sure right now you have a better position. So if you got a pawn, you want to get into pass a pawn, this is how how you do them. And the rest is just static. And here, yes, this is the end game that you need to memorize. If there's white has only one side pawn, black or your opponent, or you has a two-sided pawn. So yeah, just sacrifice this pawn and move this king to his place and devour all of the pawn. Okay. So that's what happened, and I, I moved this pawn ahead so to help me out to clear things up. Alright, so that's all. Hopefully you got some lessons from there. And thank you for watching. Bye. And please comment, share, and subscribe. And please don't unsubscribe yet. Okay, this is just a, just a testing. More maths and chess videos coming out soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.